The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to you wherever you're watching this service. I'm in St. James's Church in Durris. Today is the seventh Sunday after Trinity. This is a service of Holy Communion in traditional language according to the Book of Common Prayer. This morning, later, we're going to be holding our first service since March in St. Brendan's Church in Bantry. There are many parishioners who for all sorts of reasons cannot attend that service. And so they are very much in our thoughts and prayers. As we gather in this service to break bread and to share in Holy Communion spiritually, so also remember that the body of Christ, his broken body, is made one in him. And we are united in Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The collect of the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of thy name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel is written in the 13th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 31st verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which is indeed the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, <coughs> the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who, when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. I'm sure like most of you, you have, I have a, list of favourite hymns and almost like the charts, the top ten. And my ideas change over the, the months and the days and the years as the mood takes me. But certainly in the top two and possibly all time is the hymn, The Church's One Foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. The hymn, the words, resonate with me very powerfully. 
for all sorts of reasons, far too lengthy to go into here this morning. But of course, when we reflect on this and the foundation of the church, whereas the mighty churches and cathedrals um, scattered across the world are wonderful structures beautifully built all to the glory of God, the actual foundations of the church founded on Christ are slightly different. And these wonderful parables of the kingdom that we hear in Matthew today tell us that in fact the foundations of the church are built on tiny things, insignificant things like a mustard seed or somebody forgetting where there was treasure buried and then finding it and rejoicing or indeed a tiny grain of yeast which can rise a loaf. Tiny, insignificant things. Jesus was talking to the people of Palestine who were abandoned and felt abandoned and rejected by the people in authority in their religion who had collaborated with the Romans and so rejected and of course in our world today there are so many millions also who feel abandoned and rejected by the world but what these parables teach us and indeed our faith teaches us in Christ that it is upon these that the church is built upon the brokenness of his body made whole in him. And so the foundation is dependent on us. Sometimes we can be hard on ourselves, can't we? You can think, well, I'm not much good at that, or who am I? But then let's think back to a place in St. John's Gospel where the disciples doubted that a small boy's lunch could do anything to feed a hungry mob. But what are they among so many? The potential is what this series of parables of the kingdom is all about. The potential of the mustard seed, the potential of a grain of yeast, the potential that is within each of his listeners in the gospel and the potential within each one of us potential and the power. So as we go on our journey, let us never be dismissive of others or indeed ourselves and our gifts, all God-given, because together they can do mighty things. In the power of the Spirit, they become the church, the body of Christ. We've been on a very difficult journey. There have been so many cases and incidents, as we know, of wonderful works being done for all of us. And they've been done by people who on their own perhaps have doubted they could have done anything or made any changes. But so it is with our world. The great and true heroes are modest and quiet. They go about their work and we are inspired and encouraged by their acts. And so too May it be that in our own quiet ways, in our own sphere of influence, inspired by the Spirit in Christ, our actions and deeds will build up the body of Christ, the potential within each one of us, the seed of the Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth, Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, 
and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that through truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him 
and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Draw near in faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. As our Saviour Christ hath taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee, for that thou dost dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood, of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Before the blessing, thank you so much indeed for joining us this morning in this service of Holy Communion. Wherever you're watching, we pray that the Lord will be with you and that you will be strengthened on your journey, that you will never think of yourself or your contribution to the life and ministry of the church to be insignificant or not worth anything. We are all the body of Christ, and together we build up into great, one great 
entity, the church. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Thank you.